God started the formation of the world with a word. In the beginning, God said, let there be light, and there was light. God also said that as his children, if we got faith the size of a mustard seed, we can speak to mountains in our life and cause these mountains to move. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Good morning. First of all, I want to say thank you to all of you all who've been praying for your preaching. For some of you all out there who may not know, uh, you're preaching uh, Superman, you want to call himself. <laughs> and it came down with that old dreaded COVID. Um, but um, been taking medication since last Tuesday. Started pretty, feeling pretty good. So, but I want to tell you all today, we'll start because COVID is so rampant out there. And there's no, and I don't, and I want to just say this on the front end because I know people sometimes go, where do you get it from? Yeah, I mean, that is that. Your preacher been somewhere everywhere and been around somebody, all kinds of people in the last three or four weeks. So there's mm -hmm. no telling where. I may have concocted. It may have been at the grocery store here in town, it might have been in the dollar store. It may have been in uh, Jackson, Mississippi. I don't care. You, you don't know. Right, right. Fact of the matter is that what you do once you get it, Amen. do what the doctor tell you, and go on about your life. So that's what we are attempting to do here. We are going to start virtual, beginning at 11 o'clock, every Sunday from now on until further notice. Amen. A lot of our members are not here this morning because they are aware of such. But now I want you, I want to caution you, don't you get comfortable at home. Amen. Amen. Say amen. 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 If you watch amen. it, you got to just say amen on the little thing y'all be talking about. Amen. 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 <laughs> you get comfortable out there because we are commanded to fellowship and we need to be around each other sometimes. Amen. Amen. But at the same time, I want caution us to be very, very careful. Do what the doctors say. Yes. And be uh, cautious not to uh, spread the disease to other people. Yes. Also, I want to say beginning of this Thursday at 5 o'clock, we begin our tutoring session back for our children here at the church. Now, Ms. Danielle is going to be doing this, but she's only going to be tutoring two, she said maybe three uh, students. For, for two hours, and we want, to, uh, if we're going to send our children to make sure that, they, well, she's going to make sure that they're going to be uh, 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 doing the protocol with regards to COVID. We want to keep our children uh, safe, and we want them to be, know what safe practices for COVID is. Yeah. I won't be here with you long, but before I get into my lesson, I want you all to be aware that today is Grandparents Day. Amen. Today Amen. is Grandparents Day, and I. I saw my grandson yesterday, you know, he was in college yesterday. I don't even know if he was aware today, grandparent day or not. He may have, he came down yesterday. But I was glad to see him. And I started thinking, I want to read a little something to you as it relates to grandparents, because I, I, I think sometimes, well, I don't think that. Because I know in our culture, in the black community, grandparent is, is gold. Oh, yeah. Grandparent day is celebrated the first Sunday after Labor Day in the United States. It is a special day to honor the contributions and roles of grandparents in the family and to strengthen the intergenerational relationship in a family. If you or your children are the products of loving grandparents in your lives, you know how special and important grandparents are. Grandparents are more than just fun caretakers who let their kids watch extra TV and eat dessert before dinner. I know that's what we do. <laughs> they play important roles in raising children. In fact, one study found that kids with involved grandparents have fewer emotional problems or behavior issues. As the saying goes, it takes a village to raise a child, and grandparents often play a big part in that. Whether it's making meals in those early days after, adult, after the adult children become new parents, or picking the grandchildren up from school, or creating special moments on holidays, there are many ways that grandparents can make a difference in children's and, and grandchildren's lives. According to a study from the University of Oxford, children with involved grandparents were found to be more resilient. When these children faced life changes such as parents' divorces, they were better able to cope. The study also found that grandparents were often more available to listen to children and to help them work through their problems, probably because they were unemployed or retired or something. <laughs> I consider myself to be very blessed to have had grandparents like Rose and Charlie Lang around. I, I know that everybody say they had the best grandparents, but my grandparents were, to me, as good as they get. 
They shaped me into who I am and made me want to be a better person every day. While I miss them every day, some days more than others, their passing made me appreciate my time with them. I will never fully be able to express my love and gratitude toward them, but each day I will do my very best. Amen. I love my grandmom and granddad because without them, and you probably know this too, without them you wouldn't be who you were. Amen. You wouldn't be who you are. Now to our lesson. Our lesson today is entitled to be in his company. To be in his company. In God's company. When we're in God's company, we ought to know, I know, I know you know, everything's going to be all right. Yes, sir. But I know that there have been times in our lives when we have been in desperate situations. When we thought only the right person could help us at the right time. And more times than not, we go to that person and they help us. But there comes a time in our lives when that right person, that person that we see, that we go to all the time, they're not available to us. They can't help us. I say sometimes when we're dealing with when we're, we're, we're dealing with individual people in life, if you don't listen to God, sometimes God will put you in a position where you can't help. He'll put you in a position where you want to help, and people may think that you ought to be able to help, but God will put you in a position where you cannot help. And I wondered one time, why is that? And the answer came to me, because God wants you to know that when the help comes, it is help. Yes. I was uh, thinking, you know, you when you come into, you know, when, when I went to the doctor earlier today, and earlier this week, brother, and she, she, the doctor told me she, 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 she left out the office, she took all my vital signs and things, she came back in the office wearing a mask. She said, well, you can guess what's going on. I said, oh, COVID. She said, you don't seem too surprised or you don't seem too upset about it. I said, well, for one, it's not the scary, dreaded disease that take your life like people say anymore. And I said, two, my faith is not just in your doctor, but my faith is in God. Yeah. She said, oh, you must be a preacher. I said, oh, yeah, I am a minister. But that's not why I said it. I want her to know. At times in your life when situations like that happen, you don't have anything else to fall on because, see, all I had to fall on then at the time was go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. What the doctor told me to do, that's what I had to do. Right. Outside that, if my faith wasn't in the Lord, what else was I going to do? Right. Well, I left knowing everything going to be all right. I don't think y'all hear you preaching yet. Yeah. I'm going to preach about 15 mm -hmm. more minutes, then you don't hear me then. I don't know. I don't <laughs> yeah, know. Well, well. I'm trying to make you understand. See, I, when I went home that night, you know, I hope the time I meditate anyway, I was meditating. And I, that, a thought flashed across my, my, my mind says, you feel all right now, but what if something happened to you? What's going to happen to your family? What's going to happen to the church? And then a thought came right behind it. Stop thinking crazy. Hello? Amen. Hello? Amen. Stop thinking crazy. It's not in my hand whatever happens to me. Amen. Amen. God got it. I can't God be spending my time concerned it. about this. Concerned about death. You can't. I'm going to say this and I'm going to get right back in my lip. You can't serve God's kid. Amen. Amen. So true. Amen. God is not a God of fear. Amen. Amen. You can't be afraid of what God put in front of you. More times than not, it's just a test anyway. Amen. In Psalms 16 and 11, it reads, In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Amen. In God's company, in his right hand is plenty. I don't know. See, maybe just me. But I believe that if I serve a God like my God, who have pleasures like what he has, I ought to have some pleasures. Amen. Amen. Christians are afraid to have pleasures. I, I don't understand that. <laughs> If, if I say, he said, in his right hand, our pleasures evermore. And in our presence is fullness of joy. Christians are afraid to be a, have joy in their life. Mm -hmm. Folks still having too much joy and having too much pleasure, they start speculating. Mm -hmm. well, Amen. Mm -hmm. You need to let folks know. Uh, you may not see him, but I'm in God's company. Amen. That's why a whole lot of stuff happening to me. I'm in the right company. Get you some company. Amen. 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 Psalms 18, 24 say, say that I have a friend in Jesus. Yes, sir. I know I need a friend. Yes, sir. 
I don't know about you know some people walk around like they don't know they don't need no back. Whatever, whatever, whatever. You know we get sometimes now I said we get so superhuman. You know we think we nothing to happen to us. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of us like myself walk around here before I got COVID thinking I have that immune thing. Mm -hmm. I got that immune thing working. Immune, you know. You know I said immune. <laughs> let y'all know what I'm talking about. Hey man, can't catch it. Won't catch it. Well, till you do. Yes, right. Now what? Now you understand more fully that you are not immortal. Amen. Right. Amen. Stuff gonna happen to you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, sir. You gonna need a friend talk to when stuff happen to you. Amen. Amen. What are you talking about, preacher? You know how folks treated people when they first had COVID. Well. You treat them like they had play. You ain't talking to folks. Mm -hmm. They got their stuff. Close the door. Shut down everything. Don't go over there. Don't go on that street. Don't touch nobody. <laughs> Don't talk away over yonder. Sit down. Shut up. Be quiet. Don't say nothing. <laughs> Shun the people. Well, Amen. Amen. Until we learn we had some sense. But before then, those people we shun needed a friend. Guess who they talked to? The Lord. Amen. Now look what he's done. You can talk to people again, can't you? Right. Psalm 61 3 says, He will shelter me when storms of life beat all around me. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you. Sometimes it gets kind of ugly in life. Amen. Ooh, I tell you all the time, good. I ain't had no bad days in my life in so many years, I don't know what to do. I haven't. <laughs> I've had some bad moments in those days. Amen. amen. Say amen if you can. Amen. 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 Now, I want to just say this to you people sometimes who drag stuff on. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in the end. I want to say this right now. <clears throat> Don't create stuff in your life that's ugly and hold on to it forever and expect me to be in your company. All right. All right. All right. I can't be in that company. Amen. You ought not to be in that company. I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. Philippians 419, God shall supply all our need. If we remain in this company, sometimes people are going to say angry things to us. Sometimes people are going to say bad things about us. Sometimes people are going to say ugly things about our folks. Sometimes people are going to say bad things about who you associate with. We all know. We already know that. But I got to remain in God's company. Mm -hmm. I need to keep God with me. Even while they're doing bad things. How will I do that? Love them anyhow. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 I got to love the people doing ugly to me. To stay in this company. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, to stay in God's company, you got to do that. You, to do it. you can't be talking about I got the Lord. The Lord with me. Well. But every time somebody gets down ugly with you, you say this ain't what they want. You want to get <laughs> ugly with them. Amen. amen. God left the building. Yep. God has left the building. Man. In God's company, you won't be disappointed because he'll take care of you, according to Isaiah 41 and 10. Mm -hmm. In his company, I might suck, but I'll do it gladly. Mm -hmm. I might walk through dark times, but I'll do that gladly too because Amen. I know he's there with me. Man. Man. <laughs> you don't have to see and hear everywhere you go when you're in God's company. People say, Pastor, I just about stopped living my life because, you know, this COVID is out there. And, and I'm glad the brothers prayed this morning in our opening prayer and then our other prayer about our communion and the plight of our communion, which has gotten in people afraid to go out to eat, people afraid to go to other functions. There are people that used to live and die for football season. Mm -hmm. Because football season was a rah, rah type of a thing. Mm -hmm. People afraid to get together and do things anymore. Don't get me wrong, you need to be cautious. When it's wrong, do like the wrong. I'm in Memphis, I'm gonna be real cautious. People said, well, in Memphis, they got guns. When I'm in Memphis, I'm gonna be real cautious, is all I'm gonna say about that. Mm -hmm. You be cautious of any place you go to, but remember this, no matter how cautious you may be, if you ain't in God's company, it ain't gonna be enough. Amen, amen. amen. In his company, I can draw closer when things are troubling me. As long as I draw close with a true heart, 
Hebrew 10, 22 says, Let us draw not near to, with, the, with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. To be in God's company, our intent must be pure intent. Amen. 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 See, well, I made a mistake, and I know that the Lord don't like sin. I told you last Sunday, and I'll tell you again, the Lord has already died for all that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All that sin you're talking about, you, he's already died for that. What you need to do is to draw closer to God with true intentions in your heart. Amen. 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 When we close to Christ, got to have a pure heart. Your intent must be pure. Yes, when we're in his company, we won't have time to take pictures of the ugly times in our lives that we hold on to forever. Amen. That's what I'm saying. Amen. I will talk Amen. to you a little bit more about later on. Later on is now because I'm about to close my sermon. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Too many times in life, we stop along the way in life and take pictures of ugly things that happen in our life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then we bring those ugly things up over, yep. and over, mm -hmm. and over, well, and over. Yes. After a while, we are living in that ugly time. Yep. Now, think about what I just said. Who wants to live in an ugly moment in their life forever? Well, mm -hmm. Who wants to keep reliving something that's hurt them? Mm -hmm. Who wants to stay in a moment? that have caused them so much grief. But that's what we do. Yes, we do. People hurt us. We don't let them forget it, ever. Well. Mm. Well, I ain't going to let them forget it because I don't want to forget it. Mm. Where is your faith? Amen. Mm -hmm. Good question. We got faith until somebody hurt us. Mm. When we hold on to those terrible mental pictures, we create enemies. The kind of darkness that creates an enemy in yourself. Mm -hmm. You create an enemy in you. That enemy is the person that prevents you to forgive. So, if you cannot forgive, you cannot go to heaven. Amen. 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 I said that. You said so said. I said that. Amen. Amen. Well, I forgive them, but you keep on talking well, about it, talking ooh, about it to ooh. everybody and anybody that will lend an ear. You keep talking about <clears throat> If you're in God's company, mm -hmm. you ain't going to remember that. Amen. Amen. You ain't going to remember. We all have guiding lights within us. Now, unfortunately, light can't shine if we keep ourselves surrounded in the dark places in our life. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. If I have a light, the Bible knows, the Bible told me that I have one. I got a light that I got to put out there and let people see so they can draw people to the Lord. Yes, sir. How can I put that out there if I keep it surrounded by the dark stuff that happened to me all the time? Where is my joy? Where is my pleasure if I got to always be surrounded in the dark stuff that happened in my life? Some of us need to get some better company. We need to let old hatred, old mistrust, and old bitterness go. You've been keeping them company too long. Yes, sir. Replace that with the real company. You know how it is when you know you got real company. Clean up. Clean up. Clean up your life. Replace, replace hatred. Replace bit. They they should have been your company in no no way. But I know hatred make you feel good. I know hatred make you wanna. Woo! You you don't even have to consider people when you hate them. When you hate people, you can say anything you want to say. You can act any way you want to act. You can feel any way you want to feel. Yep. Because people will allow you to feel that way because they recognize that you hate them anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, here's a little news from the country preacher in Marks, Mississippi. The hate train don't go to glory. Amen. 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 You better get off that train. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, you better sir. get out of the company of evil for evil. If they do something to me, I'm a Christian now, but I ain't no fool. Mm. Well, you know, we like to caution that when people are doing stuff, done. we'll tell folks, I'm a Christian, but you ain't just going to walk all over me. Amen and amen. I'm with you. Don't let nobody walk over you now. But know your place. And know God's place. Let God do his work. Because he knows his work. 
God don't tell you now. If they walk on you, you walk on them back. Except for you go put your high heels on and walk on them. Amen. Oh, oh, oh. No, that's no. Amen. That's that tip for tat stuff. That's not Bible. Amen. We got to let God. If I, got, if I have God in my company, if I have God with me, and he watching people do something to me, what do you think I ought to be doing? I'll tell you. Since God is love, I need to be mimicking what he is. Amen. Amen. He's in my company. Somebody doing something bad to me. Hey, no man. I got to love him because of who I have with me. Amen. Can't Amen. love somebody doing something bad to you if you don't have some love with you to show you how to love. Who greater example of love than God? Amen. Amen. Because God is love. Is love. love. Yes, sir. And if yes, you sir. got him in your company, you going to love people regardless of what they do, what they say, how they treat you, no matter what, you going to love them. Amen. Amen. You're not a loving person, I'm going to give you an opportunity to be one. Yes. Give you an opportunity to come to the Lord. Because I'm going to tell you now, loving people that do something bad to you, you can't do that on your own. Don't even try it. Amen. Amen. Don't even try it. Amen. You you must be in the company of the Lord in order to do that. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you can be in his company by way of hearing his word and believing. Repent of your sin. What's that, Pastor? The stuff you know you're doing wrong, all of us know. All of us know what we're doing wrong. Stop that. Amen. As much as we can, pump the brakes. Mm -hmm. Pump the brakes, try, slow yourself down, read the yield sign. Use the yield sign that got the red around it, because they tell me that means stop reading. Yes, sir. You know, I was taking the test. I think I might have missed that one. <laughs> I was treated just like it was the yellow and black yield sign. Yield, you yield, going on, ain't nothing going <laughs> Slow down, stop even. Turn. If you're not getting what you need to have, when going that direction, something I'll tell you, you all to turn. Amen. Yes, sir. You know, they tell me when you're in the desert, you've been out there for a while, if there's any water out there, you can kind of smell it. You know, you kind of smell it. You get to a point where you can smell water, you're close to it, they say. I don't ever want that experience, but that's what they say. Amen. But if I'm out there and I'm smelling that water, I don't need to be going in the direction opposite of that. Amen. I need to turn. And go in the direction where the water is. Amen. Confess my fault. The Bible teaches me about confess my fault. One to another. He, he'll forgive. Isn't that something? To be able to be forgiven for a God, by a God, for just doing what you know to be right by your fellow man. Amen. Man, that's all right to me. Yes, sir. That's, that sounds real good to me. I'm going to confess my fault. Listen, I'm sorry. I didn't used to like you at all. <laughs> I didn't. It's not anything you did to me, it's the way you wore your hair. I just didn't like the way you wore your hair, and it's the way you wore your pants. I said, look at that man coming out of there, the pants, all the way up here. I had a guy when I was growing up, he used to have his pants, he used to have them way up there, he was a preacher too. I ain't gonna call his name because everybody in the brotherhood know him. Amen. He had him way up here, and he still had some suspenders. Amen. Amen. You know kids, you know, we get together, we get my, ooh, we put the suspenders for. What is it spending for? That fashion, that fashion, or whatever. Well, I found out as I get older. See, I'm gonna give me some suspenders. I used to wear them for fashion. Mm -hmm. I found out now why you wear the belt and those suspenders. Amen. Yeah. It's cause when you get older, your stomach leaves, your waistline rather leaves certain area. It's not in the same place. Amen. 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 Yeah, yeah, your waistline, the way you used to be when you were slim and growing up and all that, it's, it ain't there. It ain't there. It ain't there. So you got to kind of fidget around with it. Sometimes you, you miss that waistline with that belt and you can put all the holes in there you can. <laughs> you got to go to your trusties. Put oh, the yeah. suspenders on. Amen. Amen. That's what confession is like. Yes, confess your fault. <laughs> so the Lord can have those suspenders out there and catch and hold you even when you fall. Amen. And when you have come to the understanding that you need to be buried in water baptism, go down in that water. Watch away the sins that you know. Come up a new person. Treating people better than you used to treat them. Amen. Talking to people better than you used to talk. Listening to people better than you used to listen. Being a better version of the person that went down. That's all you need to do. Yes. The Lord to do the rest. Amen. Well, you've an opportunity to come to the Lord at this time. And before we before we do that, I want to say to those who've been listening to us out there, continue to pray for us. 
continue to listen to us, continue to support us, and we'll continue to support this community because that's what we all are here about. And let us not forget, today is, today is Grandparent Day. Think about what they represent. Think about who they are to you and just meditate on that. Yeah. I want to say to you, like I always say to you, be good to yourself and to each other. Join us again the next Lord's Day when we expound on another portion of the Lord's true and divine word. Thank you and good day. Amen.